Welcome to Mindset, Mood and Movement, a systemic approach to human behavior, performance and well-being. How psychological, emotional and physical health are all connected. In this episode, I'll be sharing my knowledge and experience to help you overcome a challenge that you might be facing in life, health or work. Are you overly self-critical? Do you beat yourself up if you make a mistake? I know this pattern very well. Self-criticism can be tough, can be damaging and highly unhealthy. And in this episode, I'm going to share a little of my journey with self-criticism and how I've worked through it and some of the technical ways that might be helpful for you. So welcome to Mindset, Mood and Movement with me, Sal Jeffries. I remember growing up and being a sweet kid, I've said this often, and I, I reflect back on that young boy who was new and fresh to the world. Gosh, what I would tell him now about how life works and how the mind works and how people work. But of course, as a kid, we don't know. We just absorb the world around us. And that was the formative time. I didn't know it at the time, but it was a formative time when this whole pattern of self-criticism really embedded in my mind. Fast forward into adult life and doing regular stuff, working, socializing and so forth. I used to be so brutal on myself if I made a mistake, if I messed up, if I if I thought I'd said something wrong to somebody. You might know that feeling. It's familiar, isn't it? If, you, if you've got a real self-critical voice. And of course, this voice is unrelenting. It stay with me day in, day out, different places, different times. And, and it would feel so normal I suppose you could say so normal that this is all I would have running mostly in the mind like oh why did you do that and that wasn't good enough and they don't like you and it took a long long time to to kind of understand it and of course sometimes it would abate a little bit but it would come back always on those judgments and I remember going to some years later seeking a therapist and I was going through some therapy at the time and we were unpacking all the challenges and, and things I had. And I was talking this this through with my therapist. And she was like, wow, you, that everything you're saying, that's like a form of cruelty. And I was horrified. Like, I wouldn't be cruel to another person. I wouldn't say these kind of things to another. And yet, I was saying it to myself within the sort of privacy of my own mind. And it was it was awkward. It was hard. And it was uncomfortable to accept. But this is a voice that I was allowing to run my thoughts, to run my experience, and it was just horrible. Now, I gave it a, a, a personality, if you were, uh, an archetype, and I called it the judge. <laughs> I think of like one of those old judges with the wigs on and, you know, very biased and miserable and um, damning. And, and it's pretty much like having a judge sitting in the mind, narrating and judging everything, and it wasn't healthy. Now, this all came about from upbringing. Now, there's no blame here, and I'm not blaming anyone, but what happened was, as a young kid, I absorbed messages about criticism, about perfectionism, about how you should be, both overt and um, subconscious as well, from all the people around me. And for some reason, as a kid, I just took it on. I, I absorbed that that was what you needed to do to be okay, to... to, to, to be loved, I guess, to be accepted, all these, all these natural human things. And I absorbed that voice. And I didn't realize that I could change it. So I want to share with you that the fact is if you have a self-critical voice and you're judging yourself and you're really hard on yourself, for a fact, it can change. So this is the great news. Now, when I started doing that work with a therapist and we, we kind of dug in deep and looked at its origin and where it all came from, as I started to make sense of it, I started to see that it was a learned behavior. Hell, for sure, it's deeply ingrained, but a learned behavior. And implicit with a learned behavior is if you've learned it, it means you can learn something else. Now, I'm not going to suggest it's easy. Good work never is. But it is wholly possible to change that voice from a critical, judgment, damning voice to one that's more, I would say now it's become more evaluative, kinder more accurate in many ways and of course I'm human right <laughs> I get my things wrong I make mistakes or something's I don't know not at my best and you know I'm, um, I can have all the whole palette of emotions for being super 
positive and happy to being grumpy and miserable. And that's just being human. So I now am more compassionate with those states. And the judgment has faded away. In many ways, it's I feel like I've retired that judge. I've put him to rest <laughs> off to some other place where he doesn't need to be judged. The interesting thing is, is what I didn't realize that the judge did have one thing that mattered. And I think this is important for you to know. And the reason the judge was there was always, even though it was slightly toxic and even though it was unhelpful, it was always there for one core reason. And that was because it was trying to keep me safe in a kind of bent, twisted way. It was trying to keep me from discomfort. It was trying to keep me from pain. And it's so curious because if we don't kind of weed out that original intent and understand it, rather than it being a bad thing, a wrong thing, a thing I don't want, there's something at the center or the, the very sort of origin of that that perhaps originally had some positive intent. And for me, it was this, the voice was there to try and avoid pain, avoid discomfort, to keep me safe. So when I knew that I just needed to make sure that I was keeping myself safe, keeping myself in, in, in good enough space, the voice could change. And I think that was the liberating thing for me is when I understood that need could be met elsewhere, but with a more compassionate voice, then things got a lot easier. So my invitation to you is if you are having uh, the beat yourself up line or judgments or you're really harsh on yourself, if you've got the perfectionist pattern, it's all wired together, then know this, that the voice is probably there for a core reason. And it was probably learned a long time ago from people around you. Understand its core reason. Is it there to keep you safe? Is it there to help you do your best? Whatever that core reason is, know that. Like a seed. And you want to take that seed with you going forward. But know that that's your mind. You know, No one tells us this, do they? But our mind is ours. Ours to curate, to shape, to, to work on. And, and often we just leave it ramshackle, like a, like a garden that's gone to, gone to hell. And actually, like a garden, you can go in and weed it. You can clear it up. You can organize it. You can bring different pieces to it. Your mind is your garden. But of course, one has to choose to do something about it. So I hope that reflection on self-criticism, it's uh, very personal to me. I trust it's, if, if this is vibing with you, I trust there's a few things that have landed and hopefully some insights about how you might deal with it yourself, understand it and start to move on because it doesn't need to be like this. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed the episode, please subscribe. And if a friend would benefit from hearing this, do send it on to them as well. If you would like to get in touch yourself, then you can go to my website, which is saljeffries.com, spelled S-A-L-J-E-F-F-E-R-I-E-S, saljeffries.com. Hit the Get In Touch link, and there you can send me a direct message. If you'd like to go one step further and learn whether coaching can help you overcome a challenge or a block in your life, then do reach out and I offer a call where we can discuss how this may be able to help you. Until the next time, take care.